I know that when I feel pretty and polished going into a work meeting, that I just feel so much more confident and ready to take on the day. Hi, my name is Alan, and here at Classy on the Run, we love talking about all things beauty and lifestyle. But what I think is even more important, especially for this video, is outside of YouTube, I actually have a full-time professional corporate job. Today, I'm sharing with you all of my tips and tricks for getting ready in about 10 to 15 minutes. I can definitely do this look a lot faster if I'm not talking my way through it, but all my tips and tricks to get ready when you've got a short but reasonable amount of time. You want to look your best heading into your work day. I know that when I feel pretty and polished, I'm so much more confident. And while it's not fair, I think that people do take us more seriously when we put a little bit of effort into our appearance. So today I'm sharing with you this beautiful, quick, easy, 10, 15 minute face. Of course, I love chatting with you guys down in the comments below. So if you have any questions, you know where to find me. If you have any video requests about being more polished in the workplace, then leave those down below because I'm excited to be sharing a lot more on that topic heading into fall. I think it's so important as professional women that we have a 10 to 15 minute makeup face that we can execute on. I don't think it's fair, but when we don't put an effort on our makeup and appearance, then we get asked if we're tired. But if we put in too much effort, then people question our competence. So I think of this look as a perfect medium where we look polished, pretty, confident, and put together. So without any further ado, let's begin. So I've already prepped my skin with Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream, and I'm just going in with just a little touch of concealer. Now, one of my number one tips for being able to get ready quickly and still looking polished for work is having a regular beauty maintenance routine. So yesterday I actually went in to get my brows waxed. I always get my brows waxed and tinted at the Benefit Brow Bar at Sephora. I've been going there for honestly as long as they've been in Canada. I remember going even back when I was in university and nobody else gets to touch my brows. Now the only problem with recently getting my brows done is I find I always get a little bit of redness and a little bit of kind of breakouts, especially here between my brows. So given that it is the day after a brow appointment, I'm just giving a little bit of extra attention to that area. Now this video isn't really about the products, but I will leave things linked down below. For your foundation for a quick and easy work look, I definitely recommend a light to medium coverage glowy foundation. I find that those kind of formulas are very forgiving and they just help you look healthy and glowing, which I think is ultimately what we want for our work makeup. We don't need to look like supermodels, we just want to look like the best, most polished, and most confident versions of ourselves. My other tip is to use a beauty sponge. You can of course use the beauty blender. Today I'm using the Real Technique sponge and I think it's actually my favorite, which is great because it's such an affordable option. And the sponge is going to come in handy later. So back to that regular beauty maintenance routine. I find that when I regularly go to get my brows, which I tend to enjoy approximately every six weeks, and that's what works for me in terms of getting good value, but also um, keeping my brows kind of under control, I find especially in the two weeks following my brow appointment that it is so easy to do my brows because I just need a little bit of gel. And so I find that a little bit of extra attention by going in and getting my brows done saves me time, especially when I'm in a rush for the next couple weeks. So there is our foundation. And as you can see, because we used a lighter medium coverage foundation, we've covered up a lot of redness, we've covered up a lot of spots, you can still see my natural skin peeking through. And I can't stress this enough, we don't need to look like flawless supermodels at the office. And I actually think if you go a little too extreme on the makeup, that you run the risk of people not taking you seriously. So our next product, I'm just going with the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer. And we're skipping contour, we're using bronzer as kind of our contour. And what this really just does is it warms up our face, it gives us a little bit of sculpting. I find that when you're using a cream bronzer, you get much more consistent results if you put the brush directly in the pan rather than um, trying to blend it out later. You know, I think one of the things that we also want to keep in mind for a quick and easy work look is less is more, especially when it comes to the amount of product, right? We can always, we can always add more, but we do want to be mindful of not doing, you know, not doing too much for our makeup. And I promise nobody at your office cares about a nose contour. Now I'm going in with a liquid blush and I'm just putting two little dots here. This is the NARS Liquid Orgasm. And we're gonna take our sponge and just dab it all in. And I find having just one tool that we can use for so many steps of our look really cuts down on time. It's really easy to blend in. It's very forgiving. I'm gonna add just a touch more. And one of our final steps on our base, I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Of course, you can use any cream or liquid highlighter that you like, but I really like this one because it is so flexible and subtle. 
and I'm just going to tap that in just around a little C-shape. Going in with MAC Paint Pot and Painterly as our eyeshadow base again, using that beauty blender and just lightly stamping it on the eye. For our brow stick, I'm just going in with a tinted brow gel. This one's from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade Taupe, but you know, Benefit, Merit, there's so many, there's so many great ones on the market. And all I'm really trying to do with this tinted brow gel is just fill in a couple little spots, groom the brows and get them in place. And see, we have saved so much time because we got our brows done yesterday. For my eyeshadow today, I'm going in with the Born This Way Sunset Strip Palette. All you're really looking for, it doesn't have to be this palette, really just any neutral palette that you own. What you're really looking for is a couple of medium brown shades like this and a few sort of shimmery shades like this one, um, this gold is fine, this sort of purple is fine. Of course, if you have a deeper complexion, you're probably going to be looking for some deeper shades, but if you have a complexion like mine, I'm really just looking for, really just looking for like a camel matte. I can build a really easy look out of that. So I'm going to go in with Nude Beach, which is the lighter shade. And I'm gonna start by just building out my shape. Now I find for my day-to-day -day work looks, I really like a soft, blown out, neutral eye. I find it gives some dimension. It says that I put in some effort today. It transitions nicely to evening, but it's not too much. If you're looking for the right eyeshadow palette for work, I have another video. I'm gonna leave it linked down below where I go through and I recommend 10 different eyeshadow palettes for work. And all those palettes are palettes I can rely on. But I really recommend if you're trying to build out a easy, simple look for work, just have one palette that you can count on. You know, you don't need to be reinventing your look every day. If you want to do that, I love that for you. But if you are just trying to get out the door quickly, then experimenting with colors and undertones probably is not what you're looking to do. So we spent that little bit of extra time just building out that shape. And as you can see, we're honestly like most of the way there. I'm gonna go in with a slightly deeper shade. This one is Sun Chaser, just on the outer third of my eye. Now, of course, this is a tutorial that's very focused on my eye shape and my preferences. So if you have a similar eye shape to mine, I think you'll find this helpful. If you don't, I would really encourage you to look for a creator who has a similar eye shape for you, just so you can pick up some eyeshadow tips and tricks. You know, maybe typing in something like a neutral eyeshadow look for hooded eyes or hooded eye makeup tips or monolid makeup tips. You know, whatever kind of eye shape you have, just I think it's really helpful to have, you know, some creators who have similar features to you. So I'm going to go in with Suns Out here, which is this nice gold shade. Again, we're keeping this look fairly monochromatic. We're going to build this up on our shader brush and just swipe that all over the main part of the lid. One of the reasons I always use MAC Paint Pot and Painterly, it is my go-to on this channel, if you are familiar, you know. I love that it cancels out all the redness, it provides some coverage, it just, it covers up the discoloration, any of the little, um, you know, blood vessels on my, any of that kind of stuff. It just covers it up and it makes it so much easier to create a quick and easy eyeshadow look. So now we've got just a beautiful soft swipe of gold. I'm gonna use my finger in the shade Shell Yeah, just right up under the brow. Then we're gonna go back to that Wayne Goss brush and just blend, blend, blend. So I'm just going in with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish under my eyes. And I find this gives just, again, a little bit more coverage. It just helps the foundation last all day. I like to put it in my T-zone. And I think most importantly, under the eyes, it just makes me look a little bit more awake. Now for myself, for the mornings where I have 10 to 15 minutes to get ready, I do like going in with a winged liner. Personally, if I have less than 10 minutes, it is not worth the risk. I just go on with my tight lining and my mascara. But I do want to share with you how I do my winged liner in case this is something that you're interested in doing. Of course, this is not a mandatory step. I have a mirror on a stand right here. And I basically, I just pull the skin tight and I just, start, I do kind of half wing. I start in about the middle of my eye and I just swipe it up. And then along the lit, along the line there, I'm just doing a few little lines to really kind of color that in. And then I just do a small flick. And there we go. That is my winged liner. And I find it just helps lift my face and make my face look so much more awake and alive. 
So I start at the base and I bring it in to about the middle. And then in the corner I just do my flip, bring it down. So now I take a black pencil liner. This is the classic from Charlotte Tilbury. I love it because it's a powder liner. And I'm just going to line my upper lash. This is just tight lining, so we're getting into that waterline. And I find this really just helps our mascara look like it goes on for days. For mascara, you can use any mascara you enjoy, but I think the most important part is to really get the mascara close to the base of your lashes. I like to do this sort of twist and roll motion where I'll sort of wiggle close and then twist and roll them up and out, making sure my lashes are nice and fanned out. And then on the bottom lash, I just do a quick kind of swipe back and forth to make sure I'm capturing those lashes. So we're going to repeat that on the other side. Now if you're really in a rush, but you know that you're going to be having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee on your commute, you can save this for the car once you arrive. But just for the sake of completing the look, I'm going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Liner. And I just... And I'm completing the look with Charlotte Tilbury's JK Magic. I find that if you're in a rush or that you just want a look that you know will execute well, basic satin bullet lipstick, you just can't go wrong. It applies easily, there's no fuss about the application, and personally I find JK Magic is just really flattering. And there we have it, the completed look. As you can see, we've really stuck to a very neutral color palette where the goal is really to just enhance my natural features rather than create something new or cover something up. I think that makeup is a lot of fun and you know when we have time, especially for a special event or an evening date or something like that where we've really time to play with our makeup and try something new and do those 10,000 steps that beauty YouTubers are always telling us to do, um, that's, that's a lot of fun and that's something I really enjoy. But for me, the reality of my makeup is day to day, I just want to look pretty and polished. You know, I'm going to work, I'm spending time with friends, and I just want to look approachable, polished, and professional. This is the kind of look that I execute every single day for work, whether it's at home or going into the office. You know, I think there's a lot of value when we have our Zoom calls um, and just looking polished and put together, especially if we are, you know, interacting with external stakeholders. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you love all things beauty and makeup, especially if you are looking for some inspiration for how to be a little bit more polished in our day-to-day -day lives or in our professional life, then definitely subscribe because I have a lot of content I'm very excited to share with you this fall. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Mwah.